individuals that I'm mentioning, they, it was a, a whole group. So basically there was never just one Jesus. There was a whole group of Melchizedek, which is the order that Jesus was from. And there was never just one uh, uh, Tammuz, but there was the whole order of Inanna, which is what the whole Tammuz thing was about. So what you find is is that all in all of these religions, it's all pointing back to Venus. And I... <laughs> I hate or love to be the one to bring this news to everyone, but that's what I was saying about the teacher it has to be non-biased because realistically, I, all I've been watching is a procession of things that is, are very difficult to stomach when you start to study Venus. But when you realize what the pentagram is really doing, how it's combusting, basically, like I explained before, it's the most key thing that you can understand is that being in a physical body makes you go into conflict at times. You have to, not at, for people who know anything about this, it's at times. For people who don't, it's all the time. And you have, you have it to the point where certain people are water people, certain people are air people, certain people are fire people, right? Right? That's what it tells you. So what happens when a fire person gets around a water person? You see, and some people are not even looking at this and seeing that this matters, but the, the goal of this is, is to not be affected by the five elements, and that's what, and to be able to wield them. And this is what they say the deep knowledge really means. It says five was the deity, or basically the God, or you, with the four great forces and able to use the four great forces, which are the pillars that, that life is founded upon. That's what they say that their original meaning was. Later on, it becomes it's the planet, it's this, it's that. But the reality is, is that it's also something that man had to ask himself anyways he should ever touch, had touched. And that's why the five-pointed star and pentagram and all this stuff has to do with Lucifer, who's the recent version now of their new surviving savior, their sun god, their Prometheus, their Hermes. All these individuals are the same individuals bring what, doing what's called bringing light to man. What does this mean? This means breaking down knowledge so other people can understand it. Who? Mainly your people. That's why everyone has their different crucified sun god, savior, who brought message to them. And this becomes the interesting part, and that's where racism began, because racism began when one said, I'm God. And then that meant the other ones weren't. Racism began when one, one showed power and strength beyond what others had seen. That's what the Emerald Tablet actually says. It says that one stalk sent the priest across, just said, go to the lands of the hairy barbarian. Okay, barbarian. Bar means Saturn, bear. You know the bear is the animal. Bar, Saturn is Mother Russia. So bar, bear, that's the great bear of Russia. Okay, so... The land of the hairy barbarians, the Caucasus Mountain, etc. So go out there and teach them and bring the prophecy across that's supposed to come to the youth because man has great troubles ahead. <laughs> no, <laughs> part of my lack of uh, words, no shit. Great troubles ahead because mankind is still at a very preliminary stage of understanding who they really were. So he said that the ones that had the knowledge obviously were the men of Kim because the men of Kim is that we came to the men of Kim. We all know who the Kimites were, and that's why there are different kinds of sons of God. Some of them use their power to master over everyone the serpent, Naga, etc. They used their power to master over everyone while some of them became great teachers and then rose up and sprung forth from them also great teachers, okay? So what ends up happening is, is that once they get over to the land of the hairy barbarians, they get attacked and then they rolled the rod on them and cowered them. This is what the Emerald Tablet says, that, that the ones that were taught this higher level of knowledge that, but still had to instruct man with it got first attacked by the men that they went to and cowered them. And then it said when they hit him with the vibration rod, which maybe shouldn't have been how they handled it, but it happened, that they fell down and worshipped. And from that point, all you get from that point is these gods have now first resisting it, maybe for a moment, like people saying, I worship you, you're a god, I, I love you, and we, we will do everything we can for you, and then after a while falling into it. That's what you find in the ancient text. Next thing you know, the god sitting up there, he started to take in the women, and then he started to spread his seed, and then the seed started to become these uh, half-god, half-men who were also disgruntled about how their fathers 
were handling the kingdoms. And that's why even the main story of the religions that are in this world today are about the fathers losing to the sons. Whether it's Saturn cutting off Uranus' penis, whether it's Jesus usurping Tetragrammaton, Jehovah, his father, wherever you find the religion, you'll find where even the Buddhists, where the Buddha comes in and basically moves all the old religions out of the way. What is this? What this is, is showing you the evolution of spirituality. All no, The New Testament will be old. That's what we're talking about. And then you get these people during the times in which these transitions are being made, and they can't make the transition. And then they think it's everyone else's fault that they can't. Because, and then the real reason why they can't is because they think they can't. And meanwhile, they miss out on the greatest thing that they could ever, ever have. Live life. When you are put here in front of all of this stuff, man, there's a lot of stuff here. Like there just is. It's all about how much you're willing to grasp. And that's, that's the whole thing that makes life not um, a waste and, and, and not unfair, et cetera, is because when you start to really see what's been put here, you start to see it different. So remember, if you don't get out and you don't really tap into what's really available, it's very easy to start to have a dismal uh, outlook on what the reality really has going on. But when you put yourself onto the highway of life and put yourself into the stream of consciousness and the current that's moving through here, what you'll have is you'll have the grand awakening of your entire being because it was something that you always were anyway. Like I was saying, if you want to know where you were before you were inside of a womb, has anything changed? Yes, somewhat. You're still inside of a womb, but you're more advanced. So what is going to happen again? Tell me what's going to happen in the future. Oh, you'll be in another womb, but you'll be more advanced. So instead of looking at this stuff as it's the worst thing, <laughs> get into it and seize what is available and pick up the scraps. Like I already said, this is what happened with the Lucifer consciousness. It came, it bought the knowledge. Some people did the right job. Some of the Nagas, some of the sons of God, some of the Nehushtan, some of the Kohens, which actually means dog, the uh, Canaans, they actually came, the dog head priest of Braxis. He came, Abra, Kadabra, which means uh, Father Ra, Abra, Abra, Father Ra's Ka, is the Da. See, this is the stuff they're not explaining to you. Son of the morning, meaning son of the more, the black more, Nin, who's Nin Garshida. This is how language is put together. Open, open, O-P-E-N, O, a circle, pin, a pentagram. Open means a circle inside of a pentagram. Opens what? This is what I was explaining is going on in the background of your plant. And that's why early in the conversation, I was like, man, how am I going to, like, why I was talking, that's why it sounds so all off and not like me, because it wasn't. I was on the other side of the room, still wondering how I was going to end up bringing all this knowledge to you so we can go into 2012 and get into the higher levels of, of spirituality that was already available to us before this brack or break was put in our way, a lamb as they call it, where they, they're worshiping the sign of lamb. He's a, 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 a stumbling block on the path. Before the stumbling block on the path that everyone has pretty much learned from at this point got into the way, then this is what we were doing anyway. And that's what I found out in history. Like, the ones that had this kind of intellect, it wasn't everyone. That was the problem also. And that's what I mean. When you start having separate ones, diversity as they love to call it. When you have separate ones, oh my goodness, watch five work, because that's how it'll be. Because one will be trying to get what the other one has, while one will com be comparing itself to the other, while one will steal and take what the other one has gathered, and it'll just be like that. And you can imagine how long that'll go on before everyone, everyone, if they say that everyone's got to do this, sit back and say, oh, wait a minute, where is God? <laughs> Because <laughs> where are you? The person forgets who they are at that point. They just have now maintained their space, as they call it. So this is where that ends, and that's what the 2012 is really about. It means Zion. It means that it, the, the actual city that comes from the sky. What, what, what kind of terminology do these people all, they, they put it all the, way, all the way far out there. Our Father who art in heaven, this means he's not here. So that's their tactic, to put it out externally. Like I said, the New Age movement is a rehashing, even with all their ascendant masses and everything, of an externalized version of what is supposed to happen inside of you next. You are supposed to master yourself and actually get the keys to your ship. 
Where are you going? To the past, present, future, any place you want, omnipresent, other dimensions, etc. It's all been available because why? You are a key. Earth is a portal. That's what the whole book says. It says there's a secret. Earth itself is a portal. In the places where the rites have been said, open up and appear ye gates. Okay, what is this? This is because when you look around the world, and I'm going to show you these pictures, you find these front doors to gates just there, but you can't see the gate. Why? Because you can't see the spectrum that you need to see in that is activated in the third eye. And I've seen it myself. It's very, very interesting. And that's why they say the cornucopic field of the third eye, when it activates with the body, actually creates the real energy. Once the real energy is coursing through a person's body and they grab any kind of rod, they can then direct the energy from their body into that rod and project their mind into the object in which they wish to manipulate. That is it. It's all right there. Now, you've got some people that say they can't do it. So, you can't do it, and you're not supposed to do it, right? And we're living on a world where everyone that is, has, has ever achieved anything here has known about it, <laughs> not necessarily done it. That's what I want to tell you. They at least know about it, and you're in a very unique position because you now know about it. What does the rabbit out of the hat mean? First of all, the rabbit is the symbol of Venus, but it's the symbol that was given to the uh, to Mayans as the symbol of Venus. It looks like a fearsome rabbit. I'm sure you've never seen one of those, but I have the pictures. It's the real rabbit hole. So the fact that the rabbit out of the hat means is that the conjunction between Saturn, who is wears that brim hat, or that those rings, just like the Jews, they wear the hat, that symbolizes the Saturn rings. The cowboys, they wear the hat, that symbolizes the Saturn rings. So the rabbit out of the hat is basically the Venusian coming from the Saturn portal. And then people are running around here acting like it's not going on. Like I already told you, there are sentient beings living in the center of the earth that ever since the beginning they went down there because they don't like the sun. They are not subject to the sun. They don't want to be subject to anything. Remember, the whole state of higher levels of consciousness is not to have any dependency on anything. Am I right or am I wrong? Okay, so if I'm right, that means that the last thing these beings want is a dependency on the sun for warmth. So they gathered themselves near to the center of the sun of this planet. That's what Mu is. The center, the Garth of Shambhala, etc. That's what the swastika means. That's why there's an eight-pointed star around it, and it's four gates, because they know there's the four gates that come out of this planet, because this planet is a square, and that's why they call this, uh, this it's a cube. They're waiting on the return of Q. They're always like, what, what do you see in, uh, in Tron? It was all great until Q. What do you see on the first episode of Star Trek? The guy, when they're about ready to take the ship finally into the enter out into space for their first time, who shows up first? Q. So do you think this is a coincidence? No, it's not a coincidence. So you can either neglect it and say, ah, you know, it has nothing to do with it. That's just the Illuminati programming. No, it's what the Illuminati had already been programmed by. Let's get it straight. That These people are not the inventors of anything. This system raises out of the water every time one land goes under and another one comes up. And then when another one comes up, it's fertile and ready because it's been laying in the bottom of the ocean and it's already ready to get ready to receive life. So when a person says they want to stop that, then they can act like they want to put their hands in front of the sun and stop it with their bare hands. Now, this is what you have to do. You were given the vehicle. This is why this, there's so much animosity between the higher beings and the lower beings and these other beings. is because the humans are sitting on a chakra center that gives them the mastery of the power of the highest beings. So the test was put before them that if they don't even learn how to turn it on, then they don't deserve it. Because before, we were, we were born with it turned on. And then that was when, again, lock to five. Because when you see the knowledge, you'll see that at a certain point we accepted the culture of death. We accepted the culture of the skulls. We accepted the culture of the T, not the cross, a T, a ta. We accepted this culture, and then we watched it run its course. But like I said, the indigenous already knew about all of this. They knew that they had to know they had to conquer all their fears. They had to go into the deepest, darkest places and shine their light. So that's how they roll. That's what I keep saying. Like each of these crucified saviors and sun gods that keep coming through, they come through spec for the time that they're living in, and then the people that they come to, they're they're loving that. They they like that because see, look, if you look in the look in the. Uh, um, the actual codexes that are there, what you'll see is that what the Mayans are actually worshiping is Christianity. Hello. There it is. Finally, 
unveiled to you. That's why it's not hard for them to do that now under the Catholic Church, because they were already doing it. They were already waiting for their Venusian crucified God to come back and to give them another level of knowledge. So here it is. That's the reality that we're dealing with now. It says, can, when I come, can you not recognize me? I come to my own first. This means that every time that this knowledge returned back to earth, people had already set up houses, children, families, etc., and did not want to receive it. This is what the ancient books actually say. And then I'm sitting back baffled most of the time and wondering why is this stuff just now coming out? Why is not other people citing this stuff? It's because all they're trying to do is the external time. Do you think I want to worry about every single month all the time how I'm going to keep the resistance going and bills and stuff paid? No, of course not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find, I'm working faster and faster and faster and faster to find out what the truth is here. So that one of the parts of the truth is it came from Nas. These Nas and Nagas and Nakals, these are the ancient words of Chichinas. These other beings that have now I've marked, now I've seen them in two places, they have the, the slanted eyes. These are the beings that were later on responsible for stepping in on Earth after it got through its primordial nightmare, meaning that after one man crawled out of the goo and another one stabbed him in the back and the octopus slammed on top of him and then produced another little spore, once all that got done thousands and thousands of years later, things started to shape up, and that's when someone else started to ship in. That's when they said, okay, well, it's at, uh, I'm getting a beep on my clock. Earth is at its level of development. Let's go down there and get things going again. That's what's been happening. And then meanwhile, everyone is expecting for someone else to have told them this already. Like the masses, which are different than ether, ether is different than mass, has not already been shown in an excessive way that the people who are controlling them have no interest in them being intelligent because, intelligent because they see intelligence as dangerous. They know intelligence and knowledge is power. And when a person has that, there's nothing that can really stop them. But again, stupid people don't know knowledge is power. So you've got to realize that this is now the time where ye wake up or regardless, you will see what this whole thing is really about. That, and, but don't let it be like Samson who had the Philistines upon him all of a sudden. Let it be like you face it directly and understand how to actually channel the energy because you are the energy. That's what is the final lesson because not enough of experiencing each other really happened before we got into this point. And that's why we keep having these big time quarrels with each other, even though every time we, we really in core, when we see someone that is hurt, we will help them, but on mass. We always think, ah, oh, those whole groups of people. But the reality is, time's up. Do you think that the higher beings would allow this thing, seeing that it's pretty much at a stalemate, to keep going without in throwing in another uh, 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 catalyst to change things? <laughs> of course not. The catalyst is on its way. Its catalyst is here. That's what I have to say today, and I'm glad I'm probably going to delete the first part of the show and throw it out of the window and get ready to get into the real part of the show. And I'm going to carry this over just a little bit because I got a few things that I have to say. And like I said, I think we got one more show. But I was reading these people working alongside a tree, that there were many people that worked alongside of the beings that were living here in this upward climb towards higher states of consciousness. Like I was saying before, the universe and how the universe works, it has things that it does. So everyone's always in a state of urgency anyway. So which, what is it better to have? When someone tells you at a certain date you'll have to have your stuff ready by then or for you to feel like you've got forever to get it ready? Which one is going to produce more urgency? Of course the one where you figure out you have a deadline. So that's really what it was about, a deadline. It's about a, someone who's moving in angles, crossing into circles. This is how the history of mankind gets all really, gets really weird because you see a man show up basically back in time. This is because they did accomplish the traveling through the telephone booth, which is the actual the pentagram when you unroll it, it's the triangle. So what happened was is that this knowledge of jumping through gates caused a schism within the reality also. This is the, 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 the latest and greatest for the situation on Earth. If it just could not get crazy enough, you have individuals that are now proficiently moving through time. And that's why I believe that 
There is always, because it, let me just rewind here, because I was going to tell a story about a certain individual known as a, as a practice, but the reality is, that I think I say that for the next show since he's also Christmas. The reality is, is that I was looking at, at a certain point, anyone, even if they are the ghouliest, will come to the level of compassion. And see, most people think it's love. And I argue about this love thing because love is still very conditional upon whether you like the person or not. But the reality of this whole thing is, is that it's compassion because compassion moves beyond love. It's when you see one that, you know, it's in the position and you just know they need help and you're moved by it. And then you, you go in and you move in. And that is what I'm talking about, the emotion that it's going to take to move through the universe. People move with compassion. So I would only imagine that some graduated being would have enough compassion to send some messages back into this time and space that would allow us to be able to grasp what we need to grasp. And just with that thought alone, I created it. That's a wormhole. I wormhole time to a level to where I could get information about what was to take place and what could be done to prevent the negative aspects of that in order to assist life. See, this is where you understand the stewardship that we do have with the universe when you will gladly work. So you say, is there doomsday coming? Yeah, there is one. Well, well, how can we stop it? Well, it's because of this. And then you start working on it immediately. This is where the level that humanity is on still in service to the greater good of, of, of the universe. This is what it's still doing. Nobody is thinking of just themselves on that higher level because they can't. Your mind is tapped into all the minds. That's how you have access to all of the knowledge. That's how you know what's going on rather than being in a space of feeling like everything is cloudy and you don't know who you are and where you are. So what is it? Either you're going to be that or you're going to be all seeing, all knowing, all omniscient, where you're connected. What is disconnecting you from that? You. Of course, don't make it anyone else's fault. You don't want to do that because that's what the world's doing now. They want to make it so many different things fault that they got to wait for it to release its hold on them before they get together. It's the transhumanist. It's Lucifer. It's Jesus. It's, well, shoot, that means we're going to have to get all these guys on the phone and see if they'll just leave you alone, won't we? See, that is the mistake. Make the reason why all of this has happened is because of you, and that's where you figure out how great it really is. You become inside of yourself again, projecting your energy and your uh, your energy and your essence into the reality. So I want to tell people if you have a question, you could call in now. There's about uh, five more minutes left into the regular show. Um, this don't be surprised if this recording doesn't appear. I'm more than likely going to delete it as soon as the show is over. But I'll, I'll keep the the back end, and I'll have it up later. But uh, the beginning was just like, I was like, man, what's wrong? You can't talk. And I was like, yeah, it's because I don't know if, uh, if, if the world is ready to listen. But that's not, my, uh, that's not my, my problem anymore. My problem only is, is to fulfill what I need to fulfill as many people, for as many people, and I don't even look at that as a problem. So let's look through some of these notes here. I have a note here. Who spliced the DNA? How do we know? Meaning that, does that mean everyone has spliced DNA, seeing that we can't see DNA? Uh, when something has no fear, it greets you. This is what I noticed about um, how we're going to start noticing when the fear level is decreased, when people just start talking to you and they don't know you. Because the reason why they don't talk to you is because they're scared of something. Whether they're scared of an interaction, scared of whatever, whatever it is, it leads to fear. So that's how you'll know when the fear starts to decrease, is when people just walk up to you and be like, hey, how are you doing? This is a great time that we're in, isn't it? All right. Physical shape of many teachers. Um, my concern is, is that if, if a person is still eating large amounts of meat and they're still trying to project this kind of message, you could see what the problem will really be. I mean, the signal, that probably could have credit for why much of what we talk about on this station is talked about nowhere else. I encourage many of these teachers to get into some type of physical shape so that you know, it really starts to work on the mind because you can tell their messages are still behind, moving a little slow. 
Uh, only the South has curves. And again, I'm running through my note list here. Very interesting that out of North, East, South, and West, which are all straight lines, what they say is a stronger, uh, they say it's the force of lightning, only the S has the curves on it. I just thought that was something to bring up. I have a mathematical anomaly, but I have to show that on the resistance. It wouldn't do any good to explain it here. And uh, let's see here, we got about three more minutes in the call, and I'm still going down this list. Hmm, I ate them. Okay, I figured out the original name of, one of the original names for the planet Venus is eight. It's A-I-T, which started to make me question, and they say the symbol is also the spider and the octopus, because both of these beings have eight legs. And now you can see this is also where things start getting a little scary for humanity, and you see a lot of this stuff pop up in, in, in the... Uh, in the, uh, the 2012 codexes, but what I will say is what it appears is it's a wormhole. That it, the planet, because it corresponds to that, actually opens up some type of gate. And the reality is, is that a gate would basically be to you. And that's why I understand 100% that something is really going to take place here because people are going to actually meet themselves, whatever that means. Um, Reaping what you sow. This is something very important. I do want to encourage people that if you do, if you can contribute to contribute. Uh, the reality is, is that how many people do you know actually plant a whole field, toil and toil in the field, and then don't eat any of the harvest? Basically, they don't share in any of the crops or anything. Only a slate. So do keep that in mind also in your principles in life that. If only slaves don't reap what they sow. So you can get into life, you can start doing things and seeing the progress of what you're doing because you're free and deep. Soul groups and these synchronicities, this is the last thing that I cracked into, and these are just amazing little tidbits, but the reason why synchronicities happen between certain people is because they're actually in soul groups. That will make perfect sense when you really think about it, but in conclusion, I found out now that to find closer to who your soul group really is, Look at the individuals that you do have a lot of synchronicities with. Uh, let's see here what else is on the list. So remember, Earth is a square, and that's why there's that cross, and those, that cross stands for the four powers. Now, here's another symbol that has been cracked completely, that the seven-headed serpent stands for those seven different rays of light or power, and that's why there became this mythology about the rainbow serpent, which was basically meaning a person who can utilize all of the power at one time in balance. And this is where I started understanding where these black magic and white magic people keep going wrong. And uh, excuse the terminology, but I guess it would be rainbow magic would be the thing of the future. But uh, some people say, oh, my goodness, that's Illuminati rated anything that talks about rainbow. But serious, in reality, I believe that what they're calling magic, which is still a very, very interesting art. And uh, I don't throw it under the bus, and I, I can definitely see how it takes the greatest courage to, to perform some of the feats. And you can also see where it's become really stagnant. But I think that's because people look at the black magic and the white magic thing and never consider the rainbow. Um, visa. Uh, that word means six serpent. I thought about that because apparently people need visas when they want to travel everywhere. VI, which is the Roman numeral 6, Fa, which is the original name of Saturn, which of course is the serpent, or Sertan. Uh, even that word, certain and Sertan, are the same thing. And so here's one thing that I was kind of curious about about two days ago. If the entire reality, now here's the interesting part, because serpent was synonymous with the sun, was synonymous with the stone. So it also is a big, it makes a big difference of where your consciousness is to how you think about these words. And that becomes very interesting. Like, I guess some people think that there is an actual physical connection between the serpent beings and the sun itself and a whole serpent empire of reptilians and Orion, etc. And, you know, there's a lot of evidence to prove that that may be true. But on another level, could it just be that the symbolism started to get entwined so much that people will realize out of one sprang forth many, and that also happened with the language. Meaning that in the end, what I believe we'll find out is that all of the words came from one word or one letter. Um, oath. Here's another interesting part about the serpent play that goes on with the English word. Our word off, O-F-F, is actually oath, which is O-P-H, which comes from the root word of ophite, which means a serpent again. So. 
once again, we're still at the same point with humanity and their serpent rulers. And so um, we're wondering if, uh, if how, how humanity is really going to take that. Like if you told the Muslims, if you told the Christians that, you know, who they aspire to really be the most is uh, none other than the reptilians, what would they really say? Um, last, Vulcan. This is the other planet in the V network. I found out that this is 100% somewhat of a V-based agenda. You should, when you see that word V, which is the Roman numeral 5, once again, we're at the same thing. And this is how all of, a whole reality will uncloak itself to you, because this is what is been remaining hidden. That's why there's the number 13, et cetera, et cetera. But the interesting part about it is, is that these V, Vulcan, Vagan, Vega, and uh, Venus, okay, these v, v planets, are... Um, Smiths, they were the first ones, and what they bought to these indigenous people, and I'll explain to you why the indigenous people looked at them so highly, was because they could smith, they could uh, make metal, and that's why you see at a certain point, all of a sudden the indigenous are making metal masks, and they're taking the gold, and they're, they're bezeling themselves out with it, and it's because what the knowledge that came to them from the pentagram people was how to uh, uh, smith, and also how to build ships because they came on ships, but not necessarily spaceships. That's what we're still trying to figure out, is the next arrival of humanity, of this replaying uh, cyclic story that keeps happening, an arrival in spaceships, which of course we know those who represent themselves under the swastika have already prepared a giant fleet of, and, and so is the old one, sea ships, which those people were still very foreign at scene, and for us, spaceships, which everyone else is still pouring that scene. Let's see what happens. Um, last but not least here, the sacrifices still continue. This is something that I'm still uh, looking at very heavily after reading enough gore of humanity's history in the codexes. I still notice that we're just a lot more civilized at it. I mean, what's really happening? Uh, it's tons of war, tons of pestilence, tons of, uh, uh, of death still going on. So... To me, the sacrifices continue, and uh, that's where we uh, really, uh, let me see if someone has a question or not. Like, like I said, if you have a question, you can press one. I will finish this list. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's just about complete. I'm going to go ahead and let what was said sink in and uh, rise and so that people can really understand what exactly is taking place here on this planet. And... Um, Either way, I would just say the best thing for us to do is to know. Like, I absolutely have no fear. I don't see any of this anymore to be something that is a negative thing. And the reason why they said, this is something interesting that was brought up, and I'll, I'll explain this last thing to you, and then we're going to go ahead and go here. But what was brought up is that there was a lot of, there were the higher, the beings that we're calling higher beings had ventured out into many different expanses, many different universes, and discovered lots of different kinds of life. But there were some basic laws, and I would just basically call these the universal laws, that still held, even on the most diverse system. And they said that because they knew those laws, that that's what gave them the ability to travel into those spaces and to be able to witness what was taking place there. And I believe that first law, is that you're everything. And the laws that roll after that are like having no fear and things of this nature. But the reality is, is that the, the, where would, if you ask me the beginning and the end of the circle be, I would say it's when you discover that you're everything. Thank you for tuning in to the Universal Current and Holist and Balanced Vibration to everyone. And we do ask you that if that message that does come on later on, if you can press 1, that would be great. If not, then we'll definitely check you out on the resistance. Anyway, there's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to be posted here. There's the new 2012 tab, which you can take a look at. There's a lot of stuff in there for you to really take a, uh, take a gander at. And I want to recommend one codex in particular, because a lot of the codexes are a little strange, and it, you know, especially since it's in a foreign language, it seems a little difficult to understand. But let me grab the name. It's uh, Maglia, Maglia Buengo or something of this nature. It starts with an AG. I would uh, check that one out because you can tell, and whoever can maybe interpret that because it seems to be in a light form of Latin, close to Spanish, that would be great also. But it seems like you can get the whole story 
out of that codex. And I'll go ahead and bring that back up into the resistance from the top and make a post out of that whole thing also. So, Holmes and Balance Corporation to everyone, and thank you.